I've made, I've had talks with Ashley and, and I've said I'm willing to do things if he's willing to sign something, but I'm not willing to, to, to uh, comment on that at the moment because I don't really know where it's going. Martin Power, is, is he going to come back? Well, he's in the gym at the moment. He's supposed to be fighting um, Jamie McDonald, um, which was a fight that Haymaker tried to get together for their show. Yeah. It, went out, it went out to purse bids and no one bid for it. Um, I've just signed a deal with Haymaker for Michael Grant and I tried to incorporate Martin with that deal. Um, but I left it with Adam Booth and he texted me today to say that he couldn't get nothing together with um, Hobson. So I don't know what's going on there, but I'd love Martin to fight again and for Martin to pick up his old dedication. Let me tell you about Michael Grant. I had a fighter a few years ago called Kevin Lee. I don't know if you remember him. Kevin Lee, he beat Michael Gomez, yeah. He was the most naturally gifted fighter that I've trained. Michael Grant is better than that. How's he uh, recovered from his shoulder? Very, very well. Um, he's, he's, he's never been with a big promoter because promoters um, came to the conclusion that he couldn't punch hard enough to win anything. Since he's been with me, myself and Peter Swinney, we've increased his punching power, and I'll pre- predict big things for this kid. Yeah, he looked good the other week against Jay yeah, Morris. Very, very, very good, and, and uh, you know Morris got himself disqualified before he got stopped. I felt, and he's done yeah, that yeah. before. He's done that before, and, and you know Michael Grant is a talent. I, 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 I'm determined to nurture into a champion. Oh, fantastic! He's got a good jab, hasn't he? Great jab, great movement, great ability, fast hands. Um, with us adding power to him, he will become a great fighter. Um, well, I got you. Are you still handling Ross? Yeah, yeah he's in this, Ross is in this world of weight explosion thing. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm glad for Ross. I think it's something that will suit Ross. I think um, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a quick start, provided we get the time to warm up. I know he didn't start quick against Jennings, but then five minutes, as I was banding him up, they came in and told me he had five minutes before he was on. We normally need about half an hour to three quarters hour to warm Ross up because he, he's big, he's bulky. Um, it, yeah. I'm not saying that Jennings, Jennings is a very, very good fighter. I'm not saying that he would have beat Jennings because of the warm-up, but it did affect us. It got us off to start it slow, and once you start slow like he did, you're chasing the fight then. Thanks for that then, Johnny. Let's have a word with the man himself, Tony Oki, speaking to our very own Kevin Taylor. Alright Tony, you've been uh, another couple of world title shots tomorrow night. How's the training been going for you? Um, it's gone really well, you know, I was in training uh, for Courtney Fry, which I thought I was fighting for the English title, um, with the winner getting a crack for Francis for the British, um, that never materialised, and then, uh, so we had a little bit of a discussion with Maloney, and realised I wasn't still on the show, and then this week come up that, um, we're thanking heavily for the, for the Commonwealth because Dean France vacated it, saying that he wouldn't um, be ready in time or whatever his reasons was. I'm not too sure. So, you know, from what I was told, he said he wouldn't be ready in time. He had a few personal problems or something. So they offered me to fight at three and a half weeks, four weeks' notice. And, uh, you know, I was straight away, I was there accepting it, being as I'd already been in training for a few weeks anyway. Beverly's a young, young up and comer. So what's um, Tony Oki going to bring to a table to compete with Beverly? Um, you know, I don't really need to prove myself. You know, I'll prove myself time and time again. Um, I've, I've, I've watched tapes of Nathan, and I can see that he's a good upweight boxer. He can be dragged into a bit of a wall sometimes. Um, you know, I've got a lot of respect for him. You know, he's young. You know, he's only 21. I remember what I was like when I was 21. You know, I'd already won two ABA titles. Um, Mike Tyson had won a world title at 20 years. So, you know, I, I know he's, he's going to be hungry and he's going to be determined, but I just feel that my time tomorrow it would be the experience with Tull over it you know do you think um, the fact that he's split with Enzo Calzaghi is going to play a part in it no I, I don't think so really being as he would have trained for so long with Enzo Calzaghi which he is obviously the best trainer in Wales and one of the best trainers in the country as you know as everyone can see but you know he, he's trained with him long enough to know sort of like roughly how to get ready for fights and plus I, I hear that he's had to go out him out and he's a very fit young man anyway you know, so I'm sure he'd be double ready, ready for the fight, and I don't really think it would have altered his preparation for the fight really whatsoever. Yeah. And going back to the Dean Francis fight, you seem to be quite in control of that fight before the knockout. How did you see that fight? Yeah, um, yeah, it was just one of them things. You know, it's, it's thing you got to get over. It's boxing. You know, it's someone's got to win, someone's got to lose. And you know, halfway through the fight, I thought, you know, I was, I was absolutely pissing the fight. I thought it was, it was one way. I even thought he was going to jack it in at some point, but. You know, I got, I got a little bit tired, I got caught with a shot when I was t- taking a little bit of breathing. My own thoughts were a certain degree, plus you've got to give Dean credit full marks. 
you know, he was still there after the beating that he took off of me, and, you know, and he produced that punch, which, believe me, that punch would have knocked people out, you know, and also, yeah, you know, and I still got to my feet, got up, ready to go again, got stopped. One of them things, let's get the rematch on after I'll be cleverly tomorrow. Is that what you want the rematch with, Francis? Yeah, quite, yeah, of course I do. You know, I'm a proud man. You know, I'm, I'm one of them people I'm proud. I was winning the fight, so of course I want a rematch. But, it's, you know, as I say, you've got to take your out, for Dean. He, he did take a hell of a beating. If you ever look at the state of his face after the fight, you know, it... it <laughs> It looked like someone had got hold of a razor and just kept cutting him. It was, you know, his face was a bit of a mess. But, you know, I've got to take my health to him. I've got a lot of respect for Dean Francis. And I believe that anyone that fights Dean Francis has got, got to learn from my lesson, which I have learned. So when we fight again, it will not be happening again. It is that the whole time that man's in the ring throwing punches, he's dangerous. Right, and you've, you've, you've always said your ups and downs in your career. What, what would you say your proudest moment has been so far? Um, well, I suppose winning the WBU World was very, very, you know, uh, a proud moment for me because, it, you know, some people say it's a genuine world title, some people say it ain't. All I can say to you is that in the, nas- uh, in the local papers down in Portsmouth, it was coming up, Tony Oki, WBU World like Heavyweight Champion, you know, and that made me very, very proud that, you know, my kids can be proud, my family can be proud of that. But I must say, when it, you know, I'm proud whenever I win. You know, like, as I say, I've already been Commonwealth champion. Of, you know, the British title meant so much to me. You know, that really hurt because that was my last notch on the belt with Francis to get the belt outright. So, you know, that, that, that made it even harder for me to set. But, you know, I'll, I'll bounce back from the straight away. I'm straight into another total fight. You know, I'm taking an, an up-and-coming young star who I was, well, would imagine most of the people that are around the top five or the top ten in like everybody's wouldn't want to fight because they think he's young, he's fresh. But, you know, there's me. Tony Oak is always willing to fight anyone. Thanks for that then, uh, Kev and Tony. All the best uh, to Tony and his opponent, Nathan Cleverly, uh, for the, their contest tomorrow night uh, for the vacant Commonwealth Light heavyweight title. Right then, moving straight along to our feature this evening. There's a th- very few people like him in British boxing is Michael Gomez talking about his upcoming rematch with Baz Kerry. Mate, how's the training going? Yeah, training's gone really well. You know, we've been training for like seven weeks now. Um, I fought last, I fought last week. I had 10 stone 10 against Chris Bolf, Bolfi. I, 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 he weighed in at 11 stone 2. I weighed in at 10 10. I knocked him out in the second round. A good fight? Yeah, it was well. You know, I dropped him in the first round with a left hook. Um, Second round, I dropped him with a left hook to the body and finished the fight. So, yeah, it was a good fight and that, but I've just come straight back into training. Um, that brings me weight down back 